Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we are at the American Revolution Museum at Yorktown. First we're going to visit the museum, then the grounds, and then we're going to tour the battlefield. And I thought I'd take you guys with me, so let's go. The museum isn't just about the Battle of Yorktown, which we'll talk about later, it's about the revolution in general. The first thing we did was catch a showing of their introductory film. That was actually pretty good. I'm really impressed with the quality of the video and the recreations that we saw. Nicely done. I've talked about this in a number of videos that I'm obsessed with historical faces and this to me is like the top tier most incredible thing that some images exist of people who were alive during the American Revolution. This man witnessed the Boston Massacre when he was five years old. This man witnessed the first shots of the Battle of Lexington and Concord. I've actually read about this man before. It's said that he witnessed the crossing of the Delaware, but I've read that it's not necessarily proven that he did, so it's interesting to see him here. Maybe there's some bit of evidence that I haven't seen yet, but can you imagine? This woman actually had a conversation with George Washington, so this is someone who interacted with him in person. Then it was time to check out the exhibits. I keep thinking it's a real person walking by. It isn't. We're in a war tent. Wow, these pistols belonged to the Marquis de Lafayette. That means the Marquis de Lafayette held these in his hand. Like he touched these things, he touched them, and they are here, and we can look at them, so close. <laughs> right outside the museum, there's a lot of interesting stuff to see. This is a Continental Army encampment. I love seeing people in costume. Make ready. Fire. Ooh. There we go. Yeah. These look like stalactites. It smells like tobacco. Oh my god. There's a freaking chicken. Right? Is that a chicken? Oh my god. We're trying to decide if we should report this, this uh, wayward chicken. What are you doing here? <sighs> We're gonna go check out the gift shop now because I love gift shops. I didn't buy anything. Then we drove to the battlefield, which was just a few minutes away. For a brief, overly simplified history lesson, the Siege of Yorktown is considered the last major battle of the American Revolution. By 1781, the war had been dragging on for six years. General Washington and French ally General Comte de Rochambeau, after considering their options, decided to take a chance on a battle in the South. And so they marched their troops from New York all the way to Yorktown, Virginia, which was occupied by the British, for a siege. The key was that the French Navy would cut off British reinforcements by sea, leaving the British general, Charles Lord Cornwallis, and his men ill-equipped to withstand the attack on land. Their gamble worked. After three weeks of non-stop bombardment, the British surrendered. Back to the visit. We had a quick picnic before getting started. Now we're going to go into the visitor center and hopefully get a sense of, you know, the layout of everything. I saw a lot of signs in different areas. It's really spread out, so hopefully we'll be able to get some more direction. Not available. Closed. Closed. So we're back in the car. A lot of the stuff inside is closed, but we got this map, which shows us the tour we're going to take. It's a driving tour, so we'll be in the car the whole time. We'll be following signs and looking at the map, and also we're downloading an app called the Yorktown Tour Guide, which is supposed to also provide more detail on everything we see. The whole thing is supposed to take about an hour and 45 minutes. I'm excited to get started. So we follow these signs. So this is a. Stop A, British Inner Defense Line. General Charles, Lord Cornwallis, had 5,500 soldiers to defend Yorktown. The key basics of this siege are that the Americans and the French dug a series of parallel trenches in order to get close to the British for their attack. 
This is the Grand French Battery. This is where they set up, they dug trenches. Weird to imagine. The Americans and the French began firing on the British day and night. Then, Washington ordered another parallel even closer to the British lines. However, the British position at readouts 9 and 10 prevented their parallel from extending to the river and completely cutting off British access. So, the Americans and the French had to enact a surprise assault. The French launched their assault on readout 9, while the Americans, led by Alexander Hamilton, launched their assault on readout 10. Both assaults were initiated using stealth tactics. So this is readout 10. It was reconstructed in the 50s, but this is where it was. And this plaque right here says that this is where Hamilton and Lafayette, they climbed up with unloaded muskets and fixed bayonets, and they overtook the readout. It's the overtaking of readouts 9 and 10 that led to the British position being untenable and ultimately leading Cornwallis to consider surrender. This is Morehouse, and this is where representatives met to discuss the official terms of surrender by the British. It's been restored to look the way that it did in 1781. Finally, we have the last stop on our tour, which is Surrender Field. This is the location where the British officially surrendered to the Americans and their allies, the French. Although this battle, this siege in Yorktown didn't officially end the American Revolution, it began peace negotiations. And two years later in 1783, they would sign the Treaty of Paris, which would officially end the American Revolution and the British would officially recognize the independence of the United States of America. But this was the last major battle of the American Revolution. This is where the British surrendered, and this is where I leave you. If you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to hit subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you in my next video.